Welcome to Love, Laughter, and Limits. I'm Tom Dozier, and this lesson is Whining and Dining, Helping Young Picky Eaters. This class, um, I'm going to share with you what we've learned from the research on food preference. This class will teach you how we learn to like certain tastes and what you can do as a parent to increase the variety of food that your child will eat. And I want to give credit to the book Why We Eat, What We Eat and to my associate Mitch Freiling for extracting much of this information. So why do we like certain foods and dislike other foods? Well, there is, we have a built-in preference for certain tastes. We like sugar automatically when we're born and we like fats. Now mother's milk has both of these, right? So that's a very good built-in preference. Other tastes that we need to learn, we need to learn to like. Generally, we do not like new taste uh, the first time. We don't like these unusual tastes. It kind of has a survival benefit. You know, if you're just uh, going through the forest and picking up things and trying it, you know, if it's new, don't eat too much of it, it might kill you. So maybe that's why we don't like new tastes. I don't know, but we don't. So one of the things to liking a taste is just repeated experience. That it takes at least three trials of, of a taste before we can start to learn to like that taste. Now, if a child cooperates, then have them take one bite. That's okay if it's just one bite. Just have them take a bite. Or maybe they just put it in their mouth for five seconds and then spit it out. And you can appreciate them for tasting it. It doesn't matter whether they like it or not. You just want them to give that experience. So and it's, not, it's not three and then they're going to like it. It may take more. It'll take more in many cases. But you want them to try these new tastes. Now, if you're looking at a young child where you're deciding what they're going to eat, then expose them to new tastes at an early age. Right? Just get them to taste it and let them taste it again. You know, one study uh, found that preschool children had a preference for salty taste if they ate starchy table scraps uh, at six months of age. And, you know, starchy foods, maybe it was a little older than that, but, but basically in the infant time, um, the starchy foods are generally salty, so they were getting that sample of salty taste and that's where their preference went. So uh, we learn to like the things that we eat. Now there's one, one effect of food and that is that we react to how it makes us feel. And so we can call it this the flavor nutrient effect. And so I have a flavor and then if the nutrients make me feel better, then I learn to like that food. So I taste something. After a while I start to feel better. Then I start to like the taste. And that is the way, one way we develop taste preferences for food. And the opposite it is a very, very true. If I taste a food, and then half an hour later I'm throwing it up, then I'm not going to eat that food again for a while. I mean, I, it creates a real aversion uh, when that happens, and it doesn't matter if I'm throwing it up because of the food or if I'm throwing it up from some research because I'm having chemotherapy, the food that I eat before I throw up, I don't like anymore. Now, there's something that's kind of the opposite of the flavor nutrient effect where we're feeling better after having a certain flavor and we call that the dessert effect and you want to avoid the dessert effect. And what happens with the dessert effect is that uh, generally we have dessert at the end of a meal. It's about half an hour, 45 minutes after we started eating. So it's a half an hour and that's just the time that those nutrients are kicking in and it's supposed to be making us feel better. So as we're feeling better, we're tasting mm, sugar and we attribute the sugar to the feeling better, our body does, and so it actually defeats the flavor nutrient effect of liking foods because we now feel better after we've eat them, eaten them. So 
if I have a neutral food and then I have dessert, that neutral food becomes less preferred than if I don't have the dessert. So having kids eat their broccoli and then get dessert doesn't increase their liking of broccoli. Dessert gets in your way. You want, you want to delay dessert by at least 45 minutes from dinner time. Maybe an hour is even better. So that the nutrients from the good food has them feeling good and then the dessert is independent of that. Right? So um, a quote from the book, it says, rewarding a child for eating spinach with dessert will not increase preference for spinach. Therefore, rather, it will increase the preference for the dessert. So don't do that, right? We don't want to use dessert as a reward to get kids to eat things that they don't like. It'll interfere with it. Now, hunger effect is very good. When you're hungry, you're more apt to eat things that are less preferred. We're less picky when we're hungry. So you want to give your kids a chance to get a little bit hungry. I'm not talking about malnourishment here or, or maltreatment or neglect, but just let them get hungry. If, they, if they're hungry 30 minutes before dinner and they want a snack, put them off. They'll whine about it. That's part of the whining that's going to come. But it's better off, if they're, especially if they're a little bit picky eater, that they hit the dinner table hungry. Right? Set up your activities so that they're busy right before dinner time and so, or before meal time so that they don't wander around the house saying, hmm, can I have something to eat? So you want to let them get a little hungry and then eat. Now what you find is that when people are hungry, we generally prefer sweet foods less. If you're really starving, do you want a piece of cake or steak, green beans, and potato? You know, you want this, the heartier food. And that's because of, that's an effect from the hunger. The next thing I want to suggest is that you avoid what I call the snack effect. Snacks are often packaged foods that are high in sugar. They have a dessert-like taste. They may be labeled as yogurt, but man, they are so yummy. And it gives the wrong kind of a taste for, for filling you up. And it eliminates hunger. So keep the snacks fairly small. And you can, actually, I've seen kids who have snacks that become an alternative to the meals. They eat a big snack with a, you know, a yogurt and some other kind of, and a fruit and something else. And, you know, they're not real hungry when dinner time rolls around. So snack time becomes their dinner and those are more preferred foods than at dinner time. So eat up at snack time and protest at dinner time. There's another effect that you can use called flavor flavor learning or the fact that an un, a novel or unliked flavor that's combined with a liked flavor, the unliked flavor will start to become preferred. So, for example, you can mix the two. You can take, uh, put gr cheese on green beans. If the kid likes cheese and doesn't like green beans, then you make cheesy green beans and you serve them, you know, basically more cheese and green beans to the point that they like it. And then you can slow, slowly drop off the amount of cheese. Um, you know, mashed potato with a pea hidden inside if you're, if you're feeding them with a spoon. Uh, broccoli with lots of sugar on it, or carrots especially, with sugar on it so it's sweet and yummy. And then you want to, then they're getting the taste of the broccoli or the carrots. And then you drop down the level of the sugar. And don't go after it too fast. Right? You don't want to get them eating the cheesy green beans one time, and the next time you put two little drops of cheese on top of the green beans. You want to be a little slow at this and give them a chance. Another way that the flavor flavor learning works is to have them alternate it. You can have 
a, a bite of something that you like, a French fry, and then a green bean, and then a French fry, and then a green bean. And the fact that these are coming close to each other uh, increases the preference for that unliked or new taste. So um, it's, it's okay. Right? And it's not going to be just uh, happen in one meal. You're going to have to give this a little time, but you only can do that kind of preference back or that back and forth when you control it or the, and, or the child cooperates with you. Um, the research showed that neutral tastes that were eaten 30 minutes before food that was liked became preferred. So that may have to do with that uh, either the nutrient effect or the, or the flavor combining effect. It's, it's kind of hard to tease out some of this research. You want to avoid what I call the attention effect. And as you learn in the class parental attention, refuse anything that generates attention and interaction with a parent uh, is positive. It, that that parental attention is a reward. So if a child says no and pushes back and then you jump in, eat, 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 no, eat, no, eat, no, then all of that attention is on refusing the food and you're actually rewarding and promoting food refusal. So be very careful about giving high energy attention to anything other than eating, chewing, swallowing, etc. appropriate behaviors. Just put as little attention as possible on the inappropriate behavior for food. So, in summary, allow a repeated taste of new foods and by getting that repeated taste, uh, it will increase the preference for those foods. And you can do that from an early age. Right? Let your child get a little bit hungry. They're much more likely to try new foods or less preferred foods when they're hungry than when they've had enough to eat and just want something sweet. You want to avoid the dessert effect and use the nutrition effect. So you want to let your child eat the good food and then give them time to feel better from it. So delay dessert by at least 45 minutes. And don't, don't use dessert to try to get the child to eat a non-preferred food, especially if they're going to get the dessert right afterwards. That actually decreases the liking of that food to eat your broccoli and then get dessert. And you want to teach your child to like new tastes by mixing the flavors of the taste they like and the new taste either together and then slowly increase the amount of the, of the, the vegetable that's in there that they don't like or alternating where they'll go favorite, the favorite taste, the unfavorite taste. And if, it, and if it takes a Skittle and a piece of broccoli and a Skittle and a piece of broccoli, then do that sometime around snack time or when you're willing to give the kids a few Skittles because that repeated pairing of the taste of something they like and something that's newer that they don't like will increase the preference for that, that unliked taste. And then finally, remember, minimize the attention on food refusal. It'll only get you in trouble. Well, thank you for watching Whining and Dining, Helping Young Picky Eaters. I'm Tom Dozier, wishing you an abundance of love and laughter in your family along with limits to help your children behave well and be happy. Thank you.